You ready? Yes, sir. I mean, we beat a good team. Uh, we beat a team that uh, has played really well this year. And um, I, th I told the guys in the locker room we played that game really for the last what seemed like 30 minutes of the game from behind. And to, um, to continue to pull and, and claw our way back to even or, or, or a bucket behind and um, have the wherewithal, um, the stick to uh, to earn a, the victory at the end, um, you know, I'm happy for our team. You know, we, um, we only had three practices uh, since Western Kentucky. There's eight days where we didn't do anything. And, you know, you could probably look at some of the minutes and figure out, like, you know, who's been sick and who hasn't um, had the opportunity to have enough time to be who they've been. But I thought for us, uh, it, was a, it was a gut check win. I thought there were some really um, key contributions. I thought Sidney Curry, despite not playing a ton of minutes, really impacted the game, brought a lot of juice to the, uh, to the game and, uh, you know, sort of exerted his toughness around the basket. Uh, I thought Mason Faulkner was, was really uh, who we thought he was going to be this year. You know, he's been slowly getting over that ankle injury. He's finding his feet under him. And, uh, you know, he's got a, a penchant for making plays in big moments. And uh, he just can't celebrate him. And then we get lost in transition on the other end. But that's another story. Um, I thought Malik set the tone, talked to the team prior to today's shoot around. And, um, you know, as I've always said, he's, he's a terrific leader. And I thought his message was spot on. And uh, our guys responded. So um, happy we won. We know we're not a finished product. Uh, we, got, we got ways to get better. And, um, you know, we'll head to Georgia Tech, I guess, on Sunday. Chris, a, a pretty rough first half again offensively, some of those scoring drops. What changed? You guys shoot 48% in the second half. What do you think you guys did differently better in that second half? Um, well, overall, you know, we shot 34 free throws. And, um, you know, a few of them were at the end when they, when they were fouling. But other than that, I thought we were in the bonus. I talked about that two games ago. It was tough to do it at Western. They just spread out the 2-3 and put Big Fell underneath. And, um, you know, we had a continued emphasis on getting the ball in the paint. I thought, you know, there, there's only so much that you can do. And I'm not trying to, to place the blame, but we missed some easy ones in the first half, right around the rim, some back screen layups and, and things around the basket that we've got we've to get to fall. And then we have to recognize when we've gone two or three possessions in a row where we haven't gotten a bucket, we, we can't take the first three that comes our way. And this team is still learning that. But we were way better in that area, but we still aren't perfect. Chris, Noah had 14 of his 17 in the second half. And that just can you speak on the three? He hit five in a row there, but the three was it was a tough shot there. Yeah, I thought he was going to hit the one in front of our bench too. You know, that, um, I think would have put us up five. But you know, to have the stones to then come back when the play was basically for him, um, I think that was a uh, a shot that he hit during my suspension. I can't even remember the game. You know, but same play, but. You know, we have a ton of confidence in Noah. You know, where he has to grow, and I'm going to continue to, to stay on him as his coach, is in other areas. Um, I thought he came up with, with some loose balls in the second half that he didn't for the first 25, 30 minutes. Um, his defense has, has improved a lot. But yeah, he's, he's a threat, and he's a magnet. You know, two defenders. I mean, first basket of the game that Malik got was because their big was hedging out um, to cover such a terrific shooter. You mentioned uh, Malik setting the tone. What was his I'm gonna, message? I'm going to keep that in the, uh, the oxygen of the Yum Center. Chris, I uh, wonder if you could elaborate a little bit on Mason. He's played more minutes the last two games than any previous games this season. Is that a function of COVID, or has he stepped up? No, he, um, he stepped up. He's, he's earned his minutes. You know, he was, he was a guy that only played in one of the two exhibition games. And, and the reason for that is he simply, you know, wasn't really ready. And, you know, we're, we're a step, a couple steps up from the exhibition season. You know, we're playing ACC teams, you know, a team that's 11-1 and one or whatever they were coming in. So uh, we knew it was going to be a progression with him, but we also knew the type of player that we were getting once he was healthy. And I think that uh, he's never been injured before. You know, he's never had surgery before until that ankle surgery. So it, it takes time. The doctor can say, you're good. But it's between the ears and feeling confident. I think he's really uh, gotten to that point now. There were times when he and Jared were both on the floor, and it looked like he was running the point. And 
uh, Jared was maybe resting a little bit uh, on offense. Uh, is that deliberate, or is that just yeah. the way it Yeah, it I mean, they're, they're interchangeable. You know, we, we can, um, depending on who's guarding them, uh, we can put that defender if we don't think they're, they're uh, as good in, in a ball screen situation uh, to get through. Uh, Jared expends a heck of a lot of energy on the defensive end. He guarded uh, what I think is a first-team all-ACC player, and Alondis Williams for most of the night.